Let's do a quick review of completing the square. So the goal of completing the square is to start with a quadratic, um, get it in this form so that we can make it a perfect square, right? This is called a perfect square. So our goal is to take any quadratic, force it to be in this form so that we can rewrite it like this. So I'm just gonna jump into an example. I think it's easier than explaining the steps. So let's start with one um, where x squared doesn't have a coefficient, and then we'll start with, we'll do one where x squared does have a coefficient. So let's do x squared plus 6x plus 5 equals 0. So our goal is to get something in a perfect square form. This is not a perfect square. There's no a where blank times something equals 5, and then they add up to 6. So instead, we're going to force it to fit fit the pattern. So we're going to group the x squared plus 6x uh, and try to force this to be a perfect square. And then the 5 will just kind of do its own thing. So what's the trick to make that a perfect square? So the trick is we're going to take the, in, the coefficient and we're going to divide it by 2. So this will be always the rule. So we're going to take 6 and divide by 2. Divide the coefficient of x by 2. So that'll be 3. It turns out that when we um, do fact when we do factor it into a square, it'll be x plus 3 squared, but I'll show you why that works. Um, and then the second step is we're going to square that number. So 6 divided by 2 squared, or 3 squared, is 9. And so the trick is, is if we add 9, this will create a perfect square. So th this is the trick to make a perfect square. Um, we can't just add 9 without subtracting it, so make sure you also subtract that number. Right? If I add it, I have to also subtract it, otherwise I've changed the equation. So let's go ahead and take that equation and I'll convince you that it makes an x plus 3 squared. So above we had x squared plus 6x plus 9, and then we had plus 5 minus 9 is minus 4, equals 0. And so if I were to factor this, right, x plus 3 squared would be the factor. 3 times 3 is 9, right, and then 3 plus 3 is 6. So this trick will always make that work. And then minus 4 equals 0. And so now we have completed the square, which has different uses. Um, you can use it to solve. What we're going to use it for is to find the vertex of quadratics, so this point, which we'll see in 2, 4. So that's going to be our purpose for now. But you can use it to solve um, as well. So I hope this helped. Let's see what happens when I put a coefficient in front of x. So let's try one more example. The numbers are going to be a little uglier this time. Um, let's do 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 equals 0. So to make a perfect square, i got to get rid of that 3 in front of x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out the 3. <laughs> dogs here. Let's go in another one. So we're going to factor out the 3 just from the 3x squared and the 4x. The 5 is going to hang out by itself. So we're going to factor it out and we're going to make a perfect square within those parentheses. So when I factor out a 3, it's not a factor of 4, so 4 just becomes 4 thirds x. We're going to leave a big gap, plus 5 equals 0. So now I have this really ugly number that I have to divide by 2. That's okay. 
So we're going to go ahead and divide that by 2. And so we get negative 4 sixths or negative 2 thirds. So in a second, we're going to have x minus 2 thirds squared. But we need to figure out what that number is. This one's negative because it's subtraction. So I'm also going to square the negative 2 thirds. What's that? 4 ninths? So I'm going to add 4 ninths, but I also need to subtract it. And then this one you need to do inside the parentheses because of it's being multiplied by 3. If I do it outside the parentheses, it's actually a different number. So we need to make sure the 3 gets distributed. So when we have a coefficient, you add and subtract inside the parentheses. And we've made a perfect square. So let's check that out. So these first three are my perfect square. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the negative 4 ninths by itself. So we're going to get 3 x squared minus 4 thirds x plus 4 ninths. This is a perfect square. Minus 3 times 4 ninths plus 5 equals 0. So we get 3 and then we get x minus 2 thirds squared. We'll always find that number in step 1 for the factor, but you can check. 2 thirds times 2 thirds gives me 4 ninths, and then negative 2 thirds minus 2 thirds brings me to 4 thirds. So that number in step 1 will always be the factor, um, but you can always multiply it out to check out. Right? It's making a product of 4 ninths and a sum of negative 4 thirds. And then we'll just simplify the rest. Um, 3 times 4 ninths would give me 4 thirds plus 5. Let's just go ahead and simplify that. So 5 would be over times 3 times 3. So we get negative 4 thirds plus 15 thirds. So that would be 11 thirds. So 3x minus 2 thirds squared plus 11 thirds equals 0. So again, this could be used for solving for x. Um, in this current chapter, 2, 4, we're going to use it to find the vertex. Um, so when we get into 2, 4, we'll see the use. Um, but hopefully this helped us review completing the square.